Uh, this is Professor Nelson with the Jewelry Design Department at FIT. Uh, tutorial here on uh, doing maquettes and using them in uh, 2D design work. Uh, rhino maquettes, taking them to 2D design. Um, doing an earring today. I do not have my headphones with me, so once again, um, I apologize for the quality of the sound. Hopefully it works out all right. I did the maquette in Rhino in our last video, in the previous video. Um, here the maquette is. Uh, the line work from Rhino. Control A, Control G to group it together. And the standard 0.33 stroke thickness. Uh, zoom in, double check I'm getting what I expect. Export it. Um, JPEG. Make sure my sliders are all the way to the max. Top quality, top resolution. Uh, best sampling, super sampling for the any aliasing. Going to go ahead and open that here in Painter. Control A, Control X, and select everything, cut, close the window. I'm not going to change it because I don't want to lose what I just had on there. Uh, paste it in here. Prep it as usual. Rotate 11. Commit transform. Rotate minus 11. Oops, sorry. Commit transform. Um, that'll scramble the pixels. Uh, invert selection. Cut. Take it down. Here's my original sketch. I'm going to move that on top. Actually, I don't gel it, so I don't have to deal with um, drawing on it accidentally. So, here's my drawing. Okay. Um, I want to actually move that uh, reference over a little bit where we can see it more, more readily. And now I'm going to start working into it. The main reason for doing this maquette was the side view. Obviously I had a decent top view to work with, um, but I didn't really know what it was going to mean from a structural perspective. So, I made the maquette. When I'm doing detail drawing, I use the soft press watercolor paper. I'm going to come in here. And I intend this to be rounded off. In fact, I will round it off now. which means that this hard corner will not exist and these hard corners. Now the one on the back could exist if I wanted it to but I don't see a reason for wanting to maintain it. And this is meant to be a flexible piece um, so I will indicate an opening for my jumper. That opening took away too much of my thickness here. I had seven tenths in the original maquette, and I want to maintain uh, roughly that much. 
It's an artifact from my stylus. I have a very old Wacom tablet, and it does that with more frequency than I would like to admit. Um, same thing, I want to have pigwood thickness here. It is not important to me that I maintain all of this bulk down beyond the opening, however. So I will let that become more graceful. Now, this little thing here. Um, this is supposed to indicate detail that wraps around. It's the sort of thing designers love to do that model makers hate designers for doing. I'm going to take a minute and put my snapping to grid, which I do not want to have. I want my rulers to show. So that I can grab a construction line if I need them. Just to verify that the rounding that I'm doing here. By the way, you'll notice that I will do this a lot. I will leave a construction line in the drawing, but not where I need it. I'll leave it slightly above where I need it, because I don't want it in my way. So if I can see it there, I can compare the distance here visually and know that I'm okay. All right. So this is actually on the piece. I'm going to come around, and these two will actually share a common back plane. All of these will, all the way across at the top. And I can decide what I want that plane to be. My maquette was choppy on the back. Okay. Um, up here it's the same thing. Um, it's rounding off. And so this is coming in at the same place. Um, this is going to be soft and rounded. Yeah. Um, this line that you see in here is at the underside of the maquette where I had several pieces coming together in assembly. Uh, that's really not going to be helpful. I don't need it because it will be one flat bottom. It will be hollowed out. Um, this is thick enough to do some hollowing on. Um, but I don't show hollowing in my views. That's something the model maker will do. Um, I would like to have a little more movement here. I'm going to let that come up. And I'm going to reflect that here. These are subtle things I'm drawing, students, but this is important. A slight break in a contour makes a huge difference. In how attractive something is.
Yeah. Um, so I have this side. Now it is rounded off. Um, but really you're only seeing the side wall here. I'm going to put an indication of a rounded corner. Because it is. It's a fair, it's a, a rather rounded actually. In fact, I see this rounding coming almost down to the hole. You can't go into the hole or the hole will show from the top. But I see a fairly well rounded jewelry uh, form here. So I've got that. I want to round this off, of course. This is not it doesn't have a corner on it. And I think I can round it even more than I have. Round a little bit on the back here. It won't matter because that'll be a solid thickness of metal where that hollow is right there. So this has to come in uh, fairly straight. Um, it could tuck under a touch as, as a sculptural element, but not very much. Okay. Um, I think I would like a little more elevation over here, kind of through this area. Yeah. So I'll allow that to happen. Yeah, you'll notice that I, I just moved the construction line down to see what I was doing and then pulled it out of the way because I don't want to have to look at it. And let that fade back in. Um, so that's essentially that portion of the side view. Uh, once again, this is rounded, so I'll indicate that. Um, there is a cleft here in the original design. That cleft takes place roughly here. attractive and I want to explain with some line work what it's actually doing. I see it coming over a little bit and then fading out. And remember the maquette's not ruling here my pencil is. This is my final drawing so I want to make sure that everything is the way I want it to be. Okay. Um, I see this actually being coming a little less far into the piece. step down. Okay, now that I've drawn that in the top, I'll bring it into the side. What I'm looking for is the corner, right here. Because that corner will be visible right here.
Now it does insinuate this tucks under a little bit, so I can actually let that move up a tiny bit. But where it crests over the edge, where this rounding stops, it has to be here, because that's where it is in that view. And a little bit further. Let it fade out. And once again, it can round a little bit with the edge of the piece, but not very much. And this is going to be rounded off here, so I can indicate that if I want to, either by a little circle or a dot, anything else, to show that I've acknowledged that it's rounding. Um, and that's really it. And see, to me, this seems very plain, but we did the maquette. And if you review that maquette file, that maquette had quite a bit of movement in it. And I've added more. So this should be sufficient. Only other thing I would like to do is, I don't like the shape of the hole being just a straight hole. I'd like it to come down into here more, but if it does, the drop is going to drop more. And I actually like how far that comes down in. And I have to be aware if I make it come back up in here, it's going to smack into that detail. So I have to stop. I want to do more, but I can't. Now I'm going to create this one. Okay. Um, I'll draw the one in the front first because it coincides with the drawing that I have. Round it. Now, this would be a perfect opportunity to use a mirror drawn. I do not want it to rotate. If it starts to rotate, guys, come up here and type in zero. Enter. And make sure you get the crosshairs, not the rotational widget. It's hard to get this to position, especially when you're running recording software at the same time. Uh, that affects your computer's performance severely. That's no, a little bit more. Remember, your ultimate accuracy is one pixel, so um, you may never get it as perfect as you would like it. But that's pretty good. Yeah, I can zoom back out. I want that rounded off. Now, in my maquette, I really cut this too close. You want to have a nice overlap of metal here. For that cap to actually function as a cap on the pearl cap. Okay. Done. Um, so over here, I'll deactivate. Well, actually, I can just move the mirror drawing. Too much. And here I have an easy reference. And same thing. Just going to round off the motif and give myself enough extra metal here at the edge that it actually functions as a pearl cap. That's fine. So, I have done the side and I have done the top view. Um, the stones. These were too big. These were like two and three millimeter stones. Those are very, very large um, from, for Melly. This is a one and a half, which is still a pretty good size Melly. Um, I draw stones by coming up with a brush stroke that's pretty much the size I want it to be. The stone to be, I mean, so 
Again, it's got mirrors rolling. I'm going to turn that off. There. Um, that's too small. That's about right. Maybe a little smaller than that. That one almost control. Okay, so if I have a brush set to pretty much give me that stone size. And remember, I put that right on the surface so I could see how much it changed in perspective. It doesn't change much. It can count as a full circle. I can come in and lay these out. It's okay if these circles are slightly larger or slightly smaller. It won't be a crisis. I do need a little smaller stone here to tuck in. This is stone layout, guys. It's a different problem altogether. I need to keep a row of stones over here. I need to have a row of stones in here. So this is a challenge as far as placement goes. I'm going to end up leaving a space a little bit. That's a little gappy, but it will allow it to follow the form the way I want it to. The important things when you're doing stone layout are the center of the piece and the edge, which makes it a real challenge in a fairly small piece because those two are very close together. you have to decide as you're laying out where your priorities are. Okay, I'm going to move that stone. Don't overdo it because this is not going to be the final stone layout. The model maker will use your design. Don't think they won't. They will. It, it gives them a starting point that they wouldn't have had without it. But they're going to face their realities on the piece. So for you to labor hours and hours on a stone layout makes no sense. But you should do an honest job of trying to understand what the piece needs in its stone layout. And then I just come in with a slightly smaller brush. and turn the blotches into circles. It's a very fast way to do a layout like this. And then the last step would be to beat it. Which is a process very much like doing the stones. I'm basically going to put a bead wherever I have a gap. Sometimes two. that was a very metallic area that was unavoidable in my layout. 
but I was able to dress it with beads. Now if I knew I was going to render this, I would not bother doing the beads in the drawing, I would do them in the rendering. But if it's going to a client in black and white form, you really do need to draw them because otherwise they're going to look at all of those beads. I mean all those gaps and say, what are you thinking? And just like with the round stone. You can see it's tedious. It's not a tremendous amount of time, but it's tedious time. It's, this is not creative, exciting work at this point. This is drawing dots. But for communication purposes, it's important. Um, and this is what the stage of the design is. It's communicating the design. We've already come up with a concept. We've already maqueted it and developed the form. Um, we've done much of our due diligence, now we are communicating the design. And there you go. Um, that's drawn, it's got its beads, it's finished. Now, this piece here, this view is almost useless to us, so it doesn't tell us a lot of information, but if I want to include it to impress my client, first off, I know the back of this is one piece, not several elevations like in the uh, uh, maquette. I know I want to round it on the back. I know I'm drawing something very small, so I want to do 1.6 on my brush or so. I know it's a rounded edge, so I know that this will be broken. I know that this is a rounded edge. A rather rounded edge. I want a nice soft roundness here. So I will put that in. And that's all you would see. Okay. Um, that's done. Um, and there's the changes. Subtle but important. Turn that off. And that's complete. Thanks so much for watching.